السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي قصرت عن رؤيته أبصار الناظرين وعجزت عن نعته أوهام الواصفين الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين وبالقاسم محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى وقوله الحق وهو أستق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعدا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is the last in this series of majalis in which we were commemorating the shahadat of Mawla Muttaqiyan Amir Al-Mu'mineen Yasub al-Din Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. And indeed, these are the nights in which we give condolence to Imam of our time. As the loss of Amir al-Mu'mineen, even after so many centuries and so many years, every time this commemoration comes around, and especially for those who are in Kufa and in Najaf. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also grant us the opportunity to be able to witness or be present um, at the time of the commemoration of Shahadat or Wiladat of Mawla Muttaqiyan in the city of Najaf or in the city of Kufa. I recited these verses where some of you might think that it is a discussion for maybe another time. But what we do that we find the maximum crowd on these occasions. And therefore, it is incumbent upon students like me that whatever opportunity we get for any sort of islah and whatever words that we can utter using the kalam of masumin because arabic is not our language for majority of us take those words and translate them and put them in front of you which could be a means of islah for us and this is the time where majority is willing to listen and not that you don't listen at other times but at this point especially when you're all focused on this shahadat and this tragedy and alongside with the masaib and the tragedy if a few words of advice are presented you know people welcome them and therefore this surah surah hujurat which I chose ayat number 12 for the discussion here. Indeed, the entire chapter could be referred to as 
the chapter of morality, akhlaqiyat, ethics. And that's why different chapters of Quran are given different titles. If you want to bring morality and ethics into your children, teach them Surah Hujurat from the very beginning. What does that mean? That means not only that they recite it as they recite the entire Quran, but also understand the meaning of it, the translation of it, and so they're able to adopt the deep meanings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to inculcate into us. And amongst the ayat of Surah Hujarat is this ayat number 12, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, addressing the mu'mineen, not just ordinary individuals. This is where Allah shows faith in us that we have faith, that we are faithful, that we are mu'min. He said, Ya yuhalladhina amanu, O oh, those who have faith and have brought iman, ishtanibu kathiran min Avoid suspicion as much as possible. Inna ba'da dhanni ithmun. Because some of these suspicions, and when you suspect, and when you guess, when you speculate, is ithm. That means it's. Sin, guna. And do not start researching and going after and doing your search and doing tajassus. And do not backbite one another. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of their dead brother? You will definitely abhor it. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at the discussion, and if I can just request all of you to move forward as there are more people walking in, there's a lot of room over here. Don't be scared of the camera and move forward. And there are people in the back all the way. Um, they can move forward as well a little bit so that the doors could be open easily. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. <laughs> that Allah is not telling us to not have suspicion that is impossible human beings we see something right away we start thinking about it so either there's good suspicion or bad suspicion that is a natural phenomena that you can't have any control over you see someone you hear about something, and right away there's tajassus. That is something which is common. But what is in your hand is to not have any, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbidding it, is jtanibu. He's not saying don't have suspicion at all. He's saying don't have suizan, bad suspicion. And that is something which is in your hand. That is something which you can control because the athar that become or the consequences of this suspicion that leads to tajassus and then eventually it leads to ghaybat. You backbiting someone. These are the athar that are definitely going to come about if you do not refrain from it. And therefore Amir al-Mu'mineen in this book that he has left us with which is compiled by Sayyid Radi which includes the sayings and the letters and the sermons of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Imam says this in it, that لا تظننا بكلمة من أحد سوءا Do not have suspicion over the kalam, the words that come out of someone's tongue. وَأَنْتَ تَجِدُ لَحَا فِي الْخَيْرِ مُحْتَمِلًا If you are able to give the smallest and the slightest of ihtimal for it being something good. If that sentence could bear the smallest of good and capable of having some good, don't think negatively about what this person has said. To that extent, Imam wants you to have what? Good suspicion. Because if you don't, it will lead to tajassus. You spying on others. You going around and digging deep after having heard something. 
someone says a rumor, and that rumor flashes all over thanks to social media today, and now you want to do your own spying and your own research and tajassus over it. No, wala tajassusu. Over he, there he said, Ishtanibu kathiram min al-dhan. But here is a direct nahi. La tajassasu. This is command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he's forbidding it. Yes, there are exceptions for obviously the authorities and government agencies because in order for them to keep their country safe, they'll go ahead and have these spies. But it is speaking from mu'mineen to other mu'mineen. Do not have any tajassus and don't spy on one another. Why? Because you'll be bringing secrets out, secrets of others out. And that is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to do. He wants you to keep a lid on it. Remember the story of Hazrat Isa والسلام, when he was walking with his companions. And he said to them, giving an example, that if one of you, a friend of yours, was sleeping, in the house of Allah, as there are some people are doing at the Kaaf, so they're sleeping in the house of Allah. Or, for example, if you go to Masjid al-Haram, especially when people are performing Umrah, they have donned this ihram, very minimum clothing. He said, if one of your friends was sleeping and some of their body parts were exposed, what would you do? All of the companions unanimously responded by saying, we'll cover it. If you saw someone laying over here, sleeping, and some of their body parts were exposed, you'll go ahead and cover it up. Especially if they were private parts. More so, you'll go out of your way to find something to go ahead and cover it. Hazrat Isa said, no. But la, la takshifuna biha. Not only that you won't cover it, you will expose it even further. Like, this is where usually we utter these words. No way. He said, no, you'll expose it even further. And this is when the companions understood that he was giving a parable, an example. He wasn't speaking about someone literally lying and then their body parts being exposed and you go ahead and further expose them. He's speaking that whenever you hear some secret from someone, Instead of covering it, you go ahead and further expose it. You go ahead and share it with someone. You go ahead and tell others about it. So that's where the example is being given. Because the less you will go after this spying and this tajassus, the less you will have curiosity to go ahead and expose that individual. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want him to be exposed, then who are you to go ahead and? Dig and expose them over matters which really don't matter, over things which are not going to be for a debate between life and death. Move on. These are the nights, these are the days when you should be spending your energies towards something far greater. And me to be speaking about something far greater than these issues which unfortunately rise in the community and I'm requested to talk about. So, wala tajassasu. Do not spy. Why? When you spy on someone, it leads to what? It leads to you doing ghibat of that individual. You make up your mind about them and you speak ill of them behind their back. You know, first thing, someone says, oh, this is not ghibat because I can say the same thing in their face. The fact that you can say it in their face does not make it out to be, does not devalue it from it being a ghibat. Because if you say it even on their face, with the audacity that you have, it still it will make them hurt. And if it's hurting them, then this is considered to be a ghibat, which is not permissible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one, for suspicion, he said, don't ishtanibu kathiran, avoid many. He didn't directly say avoid suspicion. He said avoid many. For tajassus, he said la tajassasu. And when it came to ghibat, he gave an example. 
That is, any of you would like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? No, you'll abhor it. You won't even eat it when they're alive, let alone when they're dead. And why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the example of dead and not alive over here? Because if they were alive, they would be able to defend themselves. They're dead, they can't defend. They can't turn around and say anything. Similar to how that person whom you're speaking ill about is not here to defend themselves. This is your brother is also not around. So that he can go ahead and defend himself. These are the basis of akhlaqiyat that you find in this surah known as Surah Hujra. Salawat bhej Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And so we understand that this is mentioned because there is an azamat of a mu'min in the sight of Islam and in the sight of Rasulullah. Rasulullah was standing in front of Kaaba. And he said, مَا هُرْمَتُكَ مَا أَعْظَمُ نَظَرَ إِلَى الْكَابَ And he said, مَرْحَبَا بِالْبَيْتِ مَا أَعْظَمَكَ وَأَعْظَمُ هُرْمَتُ How your azim and your azamat and your grandeur and holiness and exalted nature and how exalted you are. But then he said, Wallahi lil mu'mine a'azamu hurmatan minka. That Kaaba, which is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Kaaba, looking at it, is a dua, looking at it is a worship and ibadah. That house which everyone must go around if they are performing hajj. You must do tawaf around this Kaaba. That Hajr Aswad, which is situated next to this Kaaba, inside this Kaaba, all of those things that are associated with it, Rasulullah said, Mu'min has a bigger hurmat than you. Mu'min has a bigger honor than you. You are very honorable. But a person who has brought Iman, their honor is more. How? You would question as well. But this is Rasulullah who's saying it. He said, your hurmat is from one aspect. That you are the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the mu'min, his honor is from three things. One, his wealth. Second, his blood. And third, that Allah does not want su'izan to be done toward him. Three things hold out for a mu'min to be his honor and his azamat. And that's why his honor is above yours. Salvat Biji Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Again, move forward if you can a little bit. There are a lot of gap over here. If you can get up and move, I know more people will be coming in. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So keep husnidhan, brothers and sisters. You hear something about someone have husnidhan, which means good suspicion. That maybe they had done this out of mistake. Or maybe this had happened. Or maybe this was the reason. Don't have suizan about them. You know, there was a group of thieves. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does husnizan. There was a group of thieves. And they would, you know, steal goods from the caravans that would be traveling at night time. Couple of nights, they didn't run into any caravan. And, you know, nothing came in their hands. So they came back to the city. And when they came, they went to this Mehman Sara, place of rest. And the owner said, who are you guys? They said, we are Mujahideen fi sabilillah. They introduced themselves to be as Mujahideen fi sabilillah. When in reality, they were bandits. They used to steal goods from the caravans. When this owner, he heard that they are mujahideen, fi sabilillah, he welcomed them. He asked his wife to bring food for them. And they were busy eating, enjoying all of this. They saw this young boy who was paralyzed, laying on the corner. And his wife was feeding him. He said, who is that? He said, that's my son, and he's been paralyzed. These mujahideen, so-called mujahideen, they ate, and then they left. Whatever remaining food was there, this owner said, feed it to the child. 
because they were mujahideen fi sabilillah and hadith says su'rul mu'min shifa left over of a mu'min has cure and these are mujahideen who are mu'min so this will definitely bring cure to our son our child they left next day same thing they couldn't find any caravan to steal from they come back to the same place we can get free food there they come back and they see that that child who was paralyzed last night or the nights before is now sitting comfortably and walking around right away out of amazement they ask that man what happened to this child of yours yesterday or the day before or when last time we were here you told us that he was paralyzed he said yeah but when he ate from the remaining of mujahideen fi sabilillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided cure to them that made those individuals think twice what they used to do they said we just lied about being mujahid fi sabilillah and look at the suspicion that allah has in us husnilan that he made this man believe that we are mujahideen and not only that he fed his child from the remaining of our food and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave cure to that child as if we were really mujahideen fi sabilillah that's the suspicion that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us we should have the same suspicion good suspicion for all of us salawat bi muhammad wa ali muhammad Amirul Mu'mineen very eloquently says that mizano zannul insan mizano aqlihi that when a person has suspicion about someone it is the best means of measuring their aql when a person shows suspicion toward another individual it is the best means to go ahead and gauge and measure the level of their aql how so he said if you hear someone follow on here say they heard something from here and right away they carried it to somewhere else completely believing in it let it be known that that person's level of intellect is very low because without any pondering without taking well care of what they had heard without you know confirming that sentence they right away went ahead and they spread it all around they went ahead and did it and so that's the best way of measuring someone's aql if you wanted to do so right away that'll tell you that if a person without any research goes ahead and forwards or tells you anything right away that person's aql and the intellect is at that level amir mu'minin and his kalam is filled with such things and i don't want to take too much of your time discussing this matter especially on a night such as this salawat bhej muhammad wa ali muhammad also in the same surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses when he speaks to mu'minin again he said la tasakhar qaumun min qaumin wala tasakhar nisa min nisa don't let a group of you ridicule another and don't let women ridicule one another you'd be surprised that so many elements in this ayat that we can discuss first allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say you don't ridicule someone else he said la yaskhar qaumun don't let a group ridicule one another and mock one another because when you're giving advice to someone you want to be polite to them you don't want to go ahead and say to them don't do this to others he said don't let others do this is how masumin you know presented things you heard about that story of how this old man was doing wudu wrong and instead of imam hasan imam husain go up and tell that man that your wudu is wrong they tell that man you know watch us which one of us is performing wudu correctly and he said both of you are doing it correctly my wudu was wrong that's how you do tarbiyah that's how you teach others so allah said la yaskhar qaumun min qaumin don't let a group of people ridicule and mock others and then especially while women are also part of the qaum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala separately addresses them by saying wala nisa min nisa 
Don't let any women go ahead and ridicule other women. I'm not judging anything, but it is possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it is possible that this is more in them than men. Although a lot of men do the same thing. But the fact that it is being discussed separately, there's a possibility for it to be more in them. Because that person that you are ridiculing and mocking, it is better. They may be better than you. You only know the zahir of an individual. How would you know the batim of someone? How would you know what's inside? As a person came to our fourth Imam, Imam Zain al-Abideen wasalam. Possibly he was Zuhri. And he said, Imam, I have difficult time, you know, after ilm has come to me and everything, you know, having good suspicion about people. I'm always negative about people. You know, if someone is younger than me, someone is older than me, I always have negative thoughts about them. Imam said to that man, that think about it from this aspect. That someone who's younger than you, treat them like your own son and your own child. If someone is older than you, treat them like your own father. And if someone is same age as you, treat them like your own brother. Because the way you would treat your son and your brother and your father is far superior than how you would treat someone else. So that's one thing. But second reason Imam gave such example is why? He said, when you have bad suspicion about someone who's younger than you, let it be known that because they are younger, than age, younger in age than you, they have lived less. When they have lived less, they have had less opportunity to commit a sin. As opposed to you who's older than them. So they may have less than you. And someone who's older than you, let it be known that they're older, they had more opportunity to repent and do tawbah than you have. And istighfar. So they may have done more istighfar than you do. So they're probably better than you. And someone who's same age as you, even if you both had the same opportunity, for your sins, you are 100% sure. For what they have done, you only have speculations. So in all regards, those individuals are better than you. Always regard them to be superior to yourself. Therefore, if you can develop that habit, you will not have any suspicion about them and you will not ridicule or mock them. Salat Biji Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Wala tal mizu. And do not call each other by names. Bas al fusuq. How bad it is that you call someone by bad names and nicknames after having brought iman. There was a, girl, there was a woman by the name Safiya, daughter of Hay ibn Akhtab. She was a Jewish lady who became Muslim after the battle of Khaybar and later on also married Rasulullah. But one of the wives of Rasulullah, whom Quran also talks about in Surah Tahrim, that in Tatuba looked at this wife of Rasulullah and mocked her and called her Jew in a bad way. Oh, daughter of a Jew. As if she's insulting her. Safiya started crying and that's how she came to Rasulullah. When she came to Rasulullah, Rasulullah said, why are you crying? She said, so and so called me a Jew or daughter of a Jew. Rasulullah said, you should have responded by saying that I am the daughter of Moses and I am the sister and I'm the wife of Rasulullah. I'm, my uncle was Musa, my father was Harun and my husband is Muhammad. You can call me whatever you want to while my uncle is Musa. My father is Harun and my husband is the Khatimul Anbiya. So when someone does come and ridicule you, mock you, have suspicion against you, do your ghibat, or raise unnecessary things against you, think about all the good that you already have and you're above all of this. 
And so you don't fall victim of what they're saying and what they're trying to achieve, and you don't have to worry about them. Because these people have forgotten about the severe consequences of just uttering some words, how that could be worse than sometimes taking the life of an individual. Beautifully, a poet has said in Arabic that wounds that are caused by spears and the sword, laha iltiyam, they can be cured. La yaltamu, that which has been caused by the teeth and by the tongue, there's no cure for that. The wounds that are come from someone's taunting you, there's no cure for that. But the wounds that are caused by a spear or a sword, they'll heal after a while. So how we compare the two and how we forget the enormity of this crime that is being committed. And that's why Rasulullah said, go ahead and mention what you already have. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran says, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Disclose the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you and there's no harm in explaining and disclosing all the ni'mah that you possess. Salawat deji Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I don't think I need to further explain, but we deduce a few things out of this ayat. One, calling someone by that which they don't do anymore. If someone was a kafir and now they are believers, you shouldn't call them kafir. If someone was a sinner and they have repented, you shouldn't refer to them as that. Someone who used to drink, they have left that bad habit, you shouldn't call them a drunk anymore, drunkard anymore. These things should not, these labels should not be associated with them as long as now they are in the realm of Islam and they have asked for the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, I'll conclude that how some of these habits could be removed. You remember that Hazrat Ibrahim والسلام, he asked Allah a question in Quran. He said, Rabbi Arini, O oh Allah, show me how do you bring death to life again? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right away asked, Do you not believe in me? He said, No, I believe in you, but for itminan qalb. I want to have itminan so I can see how do you do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Okay, take four birds. Place them on these different mountains. Cut them in pieces. When you look in the tafsir of it, they mention what four birds were there. First was a peacock who has this pride of his beauty. Second bird which is mentioned in this is a vulture which is greedy and known for his greed. Third bird that he picked up was a rooster which is known for his lust. And the fourth one was either a duck or a pigeon, which was for the takabur that they have. And he picked up these four birds, Tafsir mentions. And he cut them in pieces and he placed them on four mountains. And then he called upon them with the izn of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then those birds, their body parts, they came together as the ayat of Quran mentions. And they were back to life again. He said the same way Hazrat Ibrahim cut those birds into pieces and they were back to life again, the four bad traits that these birds have, pride, this false pride, this greed, this lust, and this takabur, if you are able to kill these four things in you, you'll be able to bring your heart back to life again. Because the hearts have died away. They're dead. And this is why Numerous occasions you find anaso niyamun. People are sleeping. Idamatu intabahu. When they'll die, then they'll wake up. But again, that'll be too late of a time for them to wake up. Amir Mu'mineen, Imam al Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. He portrayed the characteristics, and then he spoke about those characteristics. You go ahead and read that khutbah muttaqeen from Nahj al balagha number 193. He's speaking to his companion, Hammam, telling him that you won't be able to practice what I'm telling you. Because if you know about all of these traits, 
and I know you, you'll die out of shock, not shock. Shock in, in a sense that out of earning, you know, earnestness or learning these things. And you'll die out of it. And that's what happened when Imam was finished mentioning all of the attributes of muttaqeen. This khutbah is known as khutbah muttaqeen. 110 attributes of muttaqeen that you find in this khutbah. You go ahead and refer to another khutbah of Amir al-Mu'mineen, number 206. You find in that khutbah how Imam is telling his own people, La tasabbu, or do not, inni akrahu an takuna minas sababin. It is a matter of kirahat for me that you use foul words and foul language for one another. And that too for your enemy. Because that was the time in Safin when Imam's companions were using these words against Muawiyah and his people. Imam said, no, even them. I don't want you to use that ill language against them. Let alone someone who's your own mu'min, brother and sister. And therefore... One last thing in this regard, and I'll come towards the conclusion, that there are hukuk of Muslimin over other Muslimin. You know how I mentioned yesterday that Masumin want us to be multidimensional. One of the haq that all of the Masumin, and especially Ali used to fulfill, was to go at night time with a sack of food and give it to the widows and the orphans. You know, today, 21st of Ramadan, there's three days because Hassanan are busy with the tragedy of their Baba. Those widows and those yatim are without food. They haven't found it because nobody has come to give them the food anymore. And when they heard that Ali has been struck, the one who used to bring this food to us, and the tabib has said that milk would be a good cure for him, they go around searching for milk from wherever they can find these orphans and these widows. They come knocking on the door of Amir al-Mu'mineen that we have brought milk for him. So there are hukuk of Muslimin over other Muslimin. Inshallah, I'll have a discussion on hukuk of Muslim another, uh, um, over Muslim. But just one line from it. That Imam says there are seven hukuk which are wajibat that you should perform. Just the first one from it. He said, an Haq of Muslim on another Muslim is that you love for them what you love for yourself. And you abhor for them what you abhor for yourself. You treat them how you want to be treated yourself. You don't treat them the way you don't want to be treated yourself. You like for them what you like for yourself. And you hate for them what you hate for yourself. All of these things come directly out of the kalam of Masumin. That how many times we're willing to give something which is, you know, secondhand or whatever. He said, if you don't like it for yourself, why would you prefer it for your fellow brother? Something which is secondhand, something which you had discarded already. And so learn from it. That if you want respect, make sure that you're able to give respect. We find with all of these Ahkamat and all of these etiquettes and all of these wajibat. There's a wajib which is above all of these. Rasulullah said in one of the traditions that ma anzal Allahu kitaban wala khalaqa khalqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal any book nor did he create anyone except wa ja'ala lahu sayyadan that he created Sayyid, Sayyid in a sense, master for all of those things. فَالْقُرْآنُ سَيَّدُ الْكُتُبِ الْمُنزِلَةِ Therefore, Quran is the master of all the revealed books. There's no book which is above Quran. وَالْرَمَضَانُ سَيَّدُ الشُّهُورِ The month of Ramadan is the master and sardar of all of the months. وَلَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ سَيِّدَةُ الْلَيَالِي The night of Qadr is the master and sardar of all of the nights. وَالْجَنَّةُ وَالْفِرْدَوْسُ سَيِّدُ الْجِنَانِ 
Firdaus is the Sayyid of all the paradise that exist. Wabaytullah Sayyidul Buqa. The house of Allah is the best of the houses. Wa Jibrail Sayyidul Malaika. Jibrail is the master of all of the Malaika. Wa ana Sayyidul Anbiya. And I am. And I am the master of all of the Anbiya. Sayyid of all the Anbiya. Wa Ali Sayyidul Awsiya. And Ali is the Sayyid of all of the Wasi of all of the prophets that ever came. Wal Hassan wal Hussein Sayyida Shababi Ahlil Jannah. Hassan and Hussein are the leaders of the youth of paradise. Up until this point, you understand that what Prophet is saying that everything that he has created, Allah has created, there is someone who is a leader or Sardar or Sayyid above those things. But at this juncture, Rasulullah said, for every human being in their actions, all the actions that they perform, there are some actions which are above all of them. There is an action which is above all of your actions. What that action is, Hubbi wa Hubbu Ali ibn Abi Talib. For everyone in their actions, there's Sayyid. And the best of Sayyidul Amal, Hubbi wa Hubbu Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the best of the actions and Sardar of all of the Amal is what? Is my love and love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And in this night, when we are gathered here, to remember that personality whose love Rasulullah has placed above all of your actions. Right? Aliyun ma'al haqq wal haqq ma'ali. Aliyun ma'al Qur'an wal Qur'an ma'ali. If there are people in one valley and Ali is all by himself, you go with Ali. Because wherever Ali goes, Haq goes around him. Haq follows him. He doesn't follow Haq. And we are gathered to bid farewell to our Mola. You know, it's been two days since Imam had been struck by the sword which was poisoned. And then Tabib, as I said yesterday as well in the Masaib, Tabib was also surprised that how is it possible for someone to survive this long? And those, whoever was hearing this news, they were constantly coming. One of the companions is Asbag ibn Nabata. Asbag has very close relationship to Imam. Bahut hai Imam se Asbag ko. Aur Asbag darwaze pe baith jate hain. Imam Hassan ne aake kaha ke tamam ashab ko jane ka hukum hai. Everyone should leave. Asbag nahi jate hain. کہا میں کیسے چلے جاؤں اس امام کو چھوڑ کے کہ جس کا وجود میرے لیے شفقت آمیز تھا جس کے وجود سے ہمیں زندگی ملتی تھی امام سنتے ہیں امیر المؤمنین یہ کون ہے کس کی آواز ہے کہا اسبق ہیں کہا اس کو آنے دو لر ہمین آنے دو انہیں اسبق کو آنے کی اجازت مل جاتی ہے مولا کے قریب آتے ہیں آخری کلام ہے کچھ گفتگو کرتے ہیں اسبق یہ کہتے ہیں کہ مولا کے سر پہ جو پٹی بندی ہوئی تھی اس فراغ کو جوڑنے کے لیے یا اس کو قریب رکھنے کے لیے تاکہ اس میں سے مزید خون نہ نکلے مجھے پتا نہیں چل رہا تھا کہ وہ پٹی زیادہ زرد تھی یا امام کیا چہرہ زیادہ زرد تھا یعنی زرد چہرہ کب پڑتا ہے انسان کا اس وقت پڑتا ہے کہ جب انسان کے بدن میں اس طریقے سے اس زہر نے سرایت کر لی تھی کہ اب ذرہ ذرہ امام کے جسم پہ وہ زردی آ چکی تھی جب ایک صحابی سے یہ چیز نہیں دیکھی جاتی اس منظر کو نہیں دیکھا جاتا تو اولاد کس طریقے سے اس منظر کو دیکھتی ہوگی بس اسی عالم میں امام نے کچھ باتیں کہیں اسبا سے اور اسبق کو بھی امام نے فارغ کیا اور ان سے اجازت لی اور اسبق چلے جاتے ہیں کچھ روایت میں ہے کہ اسبق رکے رہتے ہیں لیکن یہ وہ وقت تھا کہ امام چاہتے تھے اپنے فرزندان کے ساتھ گزارنا وہ اسرار و رموز امامت 
जो इमाम हसन तक पहुँचाने थे इस शहर में कुछ बेवा कुछ यतीम ऐसे मौजूद हैं कि जिनको तीन दिन से कुछ खाने पीने को नहीं मिला है लेकिन जब उनको पता चलता है कि उनका खैर ख्वा ही इस आलम में पड़ा हुआ है तो वो आते हैं इमाम के लिए इमाम के हुजूर में दूध लेकर के बस इमाम इस कश्मकश में इन मुश्किल आलाम में इस मुश्किल हालत में वसीयतों को बयान करके कि वल्ला वल्ला फिल कुरान कुरान का ख्याल रखना कोई और तुमसे सबकत ना ले जाए वल्लाह वल्ला फ़सलात नमाज का ख्याल रखना कोई और तुमसे नमाज में आगे ना बढ़ जाए वल्लाह वल्ला फिल एचाम यतीमों का ख्याल रखना ये तमाम वसीयतें इमाम ने कर दी असरार और रमूज दे दिए बस वो वक्त आ गया इमाम की आखिरी मंजिल थी इमाम ने आखिरी सांसें ली हैं और इमाम इस दुनिया से गुजर जाते हैं अमीरमिन की वसीयत के मुताबिक इमाम हसन गसल अंजाम देते हैं कुछ ही लोग हैं कि जिनको इस बात की खबर दी गई थी इमाम सातम ने इस बात की भी बता दिया था कि मेरे जनाजे को किस तरीके से उठाना इंस्ट्रक्शन दी थी हसन को कि तुम पीछे से उठाओगे आगे से कुछ और मखलूक होंगी कि जो मेरे जनाजे को उस मंजिल पर ले जाएंगी जो मंजिल मेरे लिए पहले से हजरत नूह ने रखी हुई है जो मेरे लिए पहले से वो मंजिल मुख्तलिफ अम्बिया ने रखी हुई है इसीलिए बहुत सारे नबियों की कब्रें मौजूद हैं अमीर उलमिन की कब्र के साथ बिलाखिर इमाम को लेके आते हैं जनाजा पहुँचता है आप लोगों ने यहाँ पर भी जनाजे देखे किस तरीके से बच्चे उतरते हैं और बाप को या माँ को ज़मीन पर उतारते हैं इसी तरीके से इमाम को भी रखा गया इमाम का भी जसद उतारा गया अरे कोई पूछेगा कि किस तरीके से तुमने अली के ऊपर मट्टी डाली होगी अजर कुमल अल्लाह खुदा किसी गम में न रुलाए सिवाय गम आल मोहम्मद के वो आवाज़ें बुलंद हो गई रिवायतों में मिलता है कि कोई ऐसा जर्रा ना था कि जिसको उठाते उसके नीचे से खून नजर ना आता अरे जब खुदा ये कहता है कि अगर कुरान किसी पहाड़ पर नाजिल हो जाए तो वो रेजा रेजा हो जाएगा ये तो कुरान नातिक है किस तरीके से ये आसार रूनमा ना होंगे अजर कुमल अल्लाह बस वो वक्त आया हसन दफना के बाबा को कब्र में अब निकलते हैं अभी वापसी का सफर था आ ही रहे थे गुफे से लजफ तक लेके गए थे वापस घर को पलट के गुफा आ रहे हैं कि रास्ते में किसी के कर रहने की आवाज आई किसी के रोने की आवाज आई हसन रुक जाते हैं जाके पूछा ए बुजुर्ग आप रो रहे हैं क्या हुआ कहा भूख लगी है खाना नहीं है प्यास लगी है कहा आप इस आलम में अकेले हैं यहाँ पे कोई आपका देखभाल करने वाला नहीं है कहा क्यों नहीं एक शख्स था कि जो मेरा देखभाल करता था मेरे खाने पीने का ख्याल रखता था कुछ दिन है वो शख्स नजर ना आया कहा क्या उसको जानते हो उसका नाम पहचानते हो कहा नहीं मैं आंखों से देख नहीं सकता उसका नाम नहीं पता है अलबत्ता उसकी आवाज तुम्हारी आवाज से जरूर मिलती है बस इमाम हसन ने यह सुनना था सर को पीट कहा वो साहब ना आएंगे अरे वो मेरे इमाम मेरे बाबा अमीर उलमोमिन थे कि जो आपकी खिदमत में आया करते थे आपसे गुफ्तु करते थे अरे अब वो इस दुनिया में ना रहे सिर्फ हसन यतीम ना हुए बल्कि सारे का सारा खूफा यतीम हो गया